Well, good evening from New York City. Physics at last. I know I've put a lot of uh, videos, such as some music videos by my son, and you know, crossbow videos and English longbow videos on. So we're doing physics at last. Um, I've digested an awful lot of big time physics into a small class. So, and that's what I do all the time. Now usually I don't use notes, but because there's such a vast, a whole book full of physics condensed into this, I'm gonna carry on with my notes. Very unusual. Most people who are used to seeing me um, derive things are aware of the fact that I use no notes. There isn't much derivation in this. It's a question of collecting knowledge together. So therefore I'm using notes for this one. What I want to do is proceed from um, quantum field theory three and four, where I introduced renormalization of mass. Once, once you lear learn how to renormalize mass, you can renormalize everything else. It's the same procedure. You extract the poles. I want to extend that to get to the kalins amansic equation. Now, kalins amansic equation is like a bit confused. Some people call it the renormalization group equation, or which one do you use? There's a bunch of them. But really, it's always all only the, the same equation. It's to do with taking the action and making it scale invariant when we scale the parameter mu. That's the mass scale that's introduced to begin renormalizing uh, quantum field theory. This mu is a mass scale. And the theory is scale invariant. What does that mean? Well, you know, that's fuel for a huge big lecture. So I'm not going to get sidetracked with that one just yet. Now, who's involved in this? The same old characters. Hans Bethe, 1960, 2005, I heard him talk. And I was right beside him. He died in 99. Julian Schwinger, Jane Smoker, 1918 to 1994. Kind of a background player. Feynman, Richard, the big guy. 1918 to 1988, died at 70. He got radiation poison, I think, from working on the Manhattan Project. And his wife did too. Shintiro Tomonaga, another background player, 1906 to 1979. Ernst Stuckelberg, very much a background player, did all the work that all these guys did together independently. Raymond Dyson, organized some of the mathematics necessary to uh, make this theory Mathematically, how can I put it? Viable, um, I don't know. Freeman Dyson, 1923, and he's still with us. He's on YouTube as well. Pauli, Villars, the whole bunch of other people. There's so many people involved in this, it's difficult to list them all. So we're going to deal with the kellens amansic equation, the renormalization group equation, and this is what we had. Well, we had the action, And we find the ZJ. This is in Euclidean space, so there are no I's. Now, the action we take to be S, and S has the form. What we were looking at was a scalar field. Now I wrote in the rescaled action. The mu, the mass scale is introduced there. And we used uh, dimensional regularization to evaluate the various different diagrams.
different, we had different diagrams, like, you know, for the, the particular one that we looked at, we evaluated, and uh, you have to go back to lecture four. Now, this, when you reverse that, it becomes a negative. All right. And there are many things, and we renormalized mass, and we went in through a lot of calculations, so you have to go back to those calculations. This is a recap of what we did, right? Now, I'm going to take this off the board because I'm still recapping. I'm recapping, and then I will continue. This is a one loop, di loop diagram. Now we also had the two-point Green's function. And we had the inverse function. Defined as the inverse of the two-point Green's function. Something like that. I made a bit of sinus mistake. You can go back and check the lectures. renormalize the theory, in other words, to extract this infinity, because when the Poseidon goes to zero, this thing goes to infinity, here somewhere, I forget, uh, this term cancels this and that's the basis of renormalization, and we did that already. And we call that gamma 2. Now there's a four-point function. That's the vertex function. Now the vertex function, for the vertex function, we have to go to two loops. This is a recap, by the way. You have to go back to the previous lectures. And then we continue.
for the vertex function, we're going to have gamma 4. Renormalizing mass, the coefficient of mass in terms of the field is just phi squared. So you need just uh, the second derivative with regard to the field of the source. Uh, you just need phi squared terms. But for renormalizing the lambda phi to the fourth part, we need to take the fourth derivative with regard to the source, and we get a four prime function. Well, we get three diagrams first, and other complicated things. other complicated diagrams that I'm not going to list, but you have to evaluate all of those just the same as we did before, and we get the following. Now to realize to renormalize this one, we need to add the Lagrangian. Okay. We need to add a term to the Lagrangian just like we did for the mass case. If we add that term to the Lagrangian, this one will cancel this one, okay? So lambda goes to, the Lagrangian goes to L plus DL. In other words, we add counter terms to carry out the renormalization. Now I'm gonna point out some things. This psi function crops up a lot. So I'm gonna give some results. Psi function is the for psi one is the Euler measure only constant. And psi two Basically, these functions are um, irrational constants. Yeah? I hope you're keeping up with me. Because I'm getting up the renormalization group equation right now. Uh, are we in control? Oh, by the way, this is just a function of different re-prescribed re momenta, st and u. Don't worry about that. They are momenta. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff condensed just so you know where you're going. And if you want to find the individual steps, you get a Buchan quantum field theory and you take months to go through it. You won't go through all of this stuff in a week. So in general, what we take as a Lagrangian 
Let me add counter terms. Get the renormalized Lagrangian, we take the original Lagrangian. Terms. So where these uh, A, Bs, and Cs are counter terms designed to extract the affinities when they show, show up in the level of renormalization that we're going to. So that the renormalized Lagrangian is 1 plus A In other words, we extract the infinities like 1 over epsilon terms, 1 over epsilon squared, whatever they are, at source by introducing these extra counter terms. So we define the following. Let's say that equals 1 plus a, so we get phi renormalized. So the renormalized field is 1 plus a times phi 0. We call this phi 0. And in fact, we'll even change the notation to call 1 plus az. Now keep the z in your head because it's going to crop up again. So keep that structure in your head because it's going to crop up again. Now to wrap up the big the big deal, you don't see this in books. You do not see this in books. So watch me because you will not see anybody bother their heads to derive it ever anywhere. I tried them all. I looked at all the books. I had to go through it myself, um, and it's not obvious, right? It looks like it should be obvious, but it's not. I. I Sears and Zemansky, um, Raymond, uh, Ryder, none of the quantum field theory books derive this next little result that I've just been leading up to. So, get your camera out and take a picture of this. I'm taking this all off the board. I'll let your heads get around it first. I'm redefining these 1 plus a's. I'm calling it z. Um, renormalized field, renormalized mass, and renormalized coupling constant. Of 
course, you're going to have to go home and digest this slowly. This is a lot to throw at anybody. I don't care if you're a child prodigy or not, you'll still have to digest it. Now, we notice the following. The endpoint functions renormalized are functions of P. Lambda renormalized, M renormalized, and epsilon. And they will be multiplicatively related to the unrenormalized functions. Now we notice that this is not a function of mu. So we take the derivative, it's not explicitly a function of mu, the derivative is going to be zero. So that tells me that this is zero as well. So that this derivative is zero. this form. I would take the derivative of itself. Yeah, we're going to examine this and see that the derivative is zero. We will get the Kalman's Zemanski equation or the renormalization group equation. Which is basically saying that under the scale transformation, mu goes to mu to e to minus s, when this is some scaling parameter, the uh, theory remains invariant. And we get a group. That we get a group is a long story. That this is a, that's a long story, but we'll just do it right now. So we're doing this, we're taking the derivative, right? Actually, we don't need these guys now. Well, this is going to be just the product rule, right? We hit this one multiply by this one, and then we hit this one, multiply by this one, you know, d by d mu. We're just using the product rule, all right? Now we'll do it with a slight variation. Now I'm going to define this operator here. I'm going to multiply it by n over 2 just for convenience because it wraps up our result in the end. We don't know why we're doing that yet. It's done in retrospect. So, we hit this guy and then we hit this guy.
we know that's equal to naught. So this whole derivative is like this. Okay, well these two guys cancel. And we're left with this on the right hand side. Now I'm going to let you get your head around that because that's an extremely important step. You don't see it in books. Now this here and this here combine, so that cancels, and I get z and these cancel, they cancel. I get that result. Now I'm going to erase most of the stuff on the board. Get your hands, heads around it. Get your heads around it. Because it's coming off. I'm just leaving that on the board. Now we have the following. Everything is operating on gamma n. So the whole thing operating on gamma n. There's a derivative and there's some terms, right? Now, we can write this as a log term because d log z log to the base e z is 1 over z d by dz, and we can write that just like that, okay? And that's what we're going to do. We get this whole operator here with a log in it.
Now explicitly, this d by d mu is a total derivative, but it consists of partials. Mu by d mu, uh, mu d lambda by d mu, d b d lambda, and mu d m by mu d by d m. They're the partials for it. Now I'm running out of time. I'm reduced to this form here. Of course, I can rewrite this as I said. So this whole operator operating on gamma n gives me the renormalization group equation. Now I have more to say, but unfortunately my YouTube videos are never allowed to go on past a half an hour. This is awesome. Get your heads around it. Because nobody ever derives it for anybody. Ever. Nowhere. So, take a photograph of it, screenshot, I don't know what you can do with it. Yeah? But I hope you get something out of it. it took me a while to figure it out. <laughs>